A star is so far away, it's literally a point of light, a little perfect circle. So if I take an image of a star with the best telescope there is in existence, and then I look at that image and I blow it up, it doesn't look like a circle. It'll look like a little jellyfish or an amoeba or something. When you look at a public image from the Hubble Space Telescope, it's similar to, but not exactly the same as a raw image. The raw image is way uglier. Now, before we take a raw image and make scientific measurements from it, we have to clean it up. The longer you take that image that you integrate for, the more dark current signal you will get. So suppose I take an image of a galaxy and I have a 30 minute exposure. Well, I have that signal from a zero second exposure that we call a bias image, and I have a 30 minute dark current image, and I have the sky background that I all have to subtract. But that's not all. Each pixel in the image is not identical. If I were to hit my camera with uniform illumination, I will not get an image where every pixel has the same value. There will be variations from pixel to pixel. So we actually do take a uniform illumination image every night when we take data, oftentimes several times a night, and we call these a flat field. And that allows us to remove those pixel to pixel variations. Now, after you've done all that, you remove the bias, you remove the dark current, you flat field it, you may still have pixels that have some sort of flaw what we call hot or cold or dead pixels. You may still have cosmic rays that are going through your image. So you also need to do some analysis to remove all these image artifacts. And finally, when you get to that position, you can start making scientific measurements. Now, in modern astronomy, we're all about making measurements to higher and higher precision and accuracy. And so we think of little tiny details that just might not come to mind. For example, a star is so far away, it's literally a point of light, a little perfect circle. So if I take an image of a star with the best telescope there is in existence, and then I look at that image and I blow it up, it doesn't look like a circle. It'll look like a little jellyfish or an amoeba or something. And that's because there is an inherent problem in optics. And that is what we call the point spread function. The only way a telescope can recreate that little point of light is if the diameter of it was infinity and that can't exist. So there's always going to be a changing of the shapes of things. So scientists who are making very precise measurements of the brightnesses sometimes and of the sizes and distances between things have to take into account the point spread function of the telescope. Now, how do I measure the distance between two things? Take the simplest thing, a star. I have two stars. They're separated by some distance. They each cover several pixels. What do you do? Well, it's way more complicated than you would imagine. What you do is you fit a best fit shape onto it. And that best fit shape will have a center associated with it. And then you measure the distances between those centers. But fitting that best fit shape requires a bit of knowledge of computation and mathematics. So it's not just drawing a line from one star to the other. Another thing we like to do is measure the brightnesses of objects. There are certain stars of known brightness. We call those calibration stars. And we can take an image, and if there's a calibration star in it, we can compare the brightness of the calibration star to the brightness of something else in the image in order to get an absolute calibration but we don't do that very often. More often, we do what's known as difference imaging. Suppose I have an object, a star, that changes its brightness for some reason. There are many reasons stars change their brightness. It can be getting eclipsed by a planet. It could be in a binary system where two stars eclipse each other. The star can expand and contract over and over, a pulsating star. Some stars have explosions on their surface. So how do we tell if a star is changing its brightness? If I take a series of say 100 images over the course of the night, all those images, even if I use the exact same exposure time, will not be the exact same brightness from image to image. 
That's because the sky is changing, the temperature of the camera is changing, the atmosphere is changing. So how do I get a good measurement? Well, I can take my target of interest and I can find stars around it that don't change brightness and I can compare the brightness of my star to these reference stars from image to image. And the easiest way to do that is just to subtract the brightness of one from the brightness of the other. And we call that difference imaging. And in using that technique, we can look at these eclipses by either other stars or planets. We can look at these pulsating stars and we can get out very beautiful what we call light curves, which is a plot of the brightness of the star versus time or phase. There is no reason why everyone shouldn't have access to the very best education. Welcome to Calculus One. To introduction to astronomy. To introduction to philosophy. To statistics. Microeconomics. Psychology. Let's get started.